synthesis of quantum dots this is another interesting section of preparing quantum dots of cadmium selenide using micro emulsion method so let's watch this small demonstration of synthesizing the quantum dots warning this experiment uses toxic and carcinogenic reagents and directly handles extremely hot liquids gloves Protective clothing and a fume hood should be used. This should be performed by or under the direct supervision of an experienced chemist. Greetings fellow nerds. In this video we're going to make cadmium selenide quantum dots, a type of nanoparticle with interesting properties. First we need to make our source of selenium. Get 30 milligrams of pure selenium powder and add to it a stir bar. Then add in 5 milliliters of 1 octadecene and turn on the stirring. Now add 0.4 milliliters of trioctyl phosphine. Keep stirring and gently heat it until all the selenium dissolves into a clear liquid. What's happening is the trioctyl phosphine is reacting with the selenium to form trioctyl phosphine selenide. Once it's ready, seal it and let it cool. This will provide us with about 5 experiments worth. Now get 13 milligrams of cadmium oxide in a flask and place in a glass thermometer. Mine happens to be a glass encapsulated digital thermometer. Now add to it 0.6 milliliters of oleic acid and 10 milliliters of 1 octadecene. Now heat the mixture until the cadmium oxide completely dissolves. What's happening is the cadmium oxide is reacting with the oleic acid to form cadmium oleate. After the cadmium oxide dissolves, keep heating until the mixture hits 225 Celsius. While you wait, get everything set up. Have a dozen or so small vials or test tubes and prepare a syringe with 1 milliliter of the trioctyl phosphine selenide solution from before. Be ready, because you need to work quickly. Once the cadmium solution reaches 225 Celsius, inject the selenium solution and give it a quick shake. Now immediately start withdrawing small samples of the solution, about half a milliliter to a full milliliter, and put them into the vials. For the first several samples, try to do this one after another as fast as possible. Then withdraw only when you see the color significantly change. What's happening is the cadmium oleate is reacting with the trioctyl phosphine selenide to form cadmium selenide. These particles start small but grow in size the longer the solution reacts. Now this growth only continues if the temperature is maintained, so withdrawing it at regular intervals and placing it in a room temperature vial stops the reaction and locks the particles into their current size. So by controlling how long they stay in hot solution, we can control their size. The oleic acid surrounds or caps the particles and keeps them from aggregating. Okay, now we've made quantum dots. These particular quantum dots are fluorescent in the visible region and if exposed to an ultraviolet light will fluoresce different colors. Now scientifically we have to ask the question, if all the samples have exactly the same chemical composition, why do they have different colors? The difference arises because the particles are so small that the allowed quantum states of the electrons in them are partially determined by the particles of shape and size, not just on their composition like in bulk materials. The best analogy I can think of actually is a stereo system. Large speakers are really good at producing long wavelength low frequency bass sounds, while smaller speakers are really good at short wavelength higher frequency sounds. This is due to differences in the size of the diaphragm and the frequencies it can support. Likewise, for quantum dots, the smaller the dot, the smaller and bluer the natural wavelength of light it will emit, the bigger the dot, the longer and redder the light it will emit. Quantum dots are being researched because there are many applications such as making solar cells more efficient, better display technologies, and even medical imaging applications. So even if you can't make them in the lab, I'm very sure you'll soon encounter them in your daily life. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment. The procedure in this video was based on this article published in the Journal of Chemical Education. Now an additional experimental note if you try this is that you probably won't actually see this broad range of color with your eyes, since the wavelength differences are actually very subtle. You'll probably only see yellow and green. That's all I'm actually seeing here in real life, but a good high definition camera will automatically color compensate to give the appearance of this broad range you're seeing in the video. So to observe these differences, if you don't have a fluorescent spectrometer, look at the samples through a good digital camera. Warning, this experiment uses toxic and carcinogenic reagents and So just now we have watched a live demonstration 
of synthesizing this very brilliantly colored cadmium selenide quantum dots. The setup is very simple. It was prepared on a very small scale. If you want to prepare on a large scale, you may use this uh, three necked uh, round bottom flask with a heater and the mechanical stirrer. Okay, in an inert atmosphere, it is prepared. And then this is surfactant assisted precipitation. So after the process, we could get this mono dispersed homogeneous cadmium selenide particle. Let's revise. Uh, the entire process once again. So herein we can see how these nanoparticles are formed. So the metal precursor are in a colloidal solution, one micro emulsion which contains the metal precursor, which may be any metal salts, FeCl3, FeCl2, copper chloride, cadmium uh, oxide, etc. And another micro emulsion will contain the reducing agent like ammonium hydroxide, hydrazine or sodium borohydrate. So these two microemulsions are like reverse micelles. We know that the core is aqueous and the continuous phase is oil phase. So you can see oil phase here. This is known as a two emulsion method. So in this case, two emulsions are mixed, one and two. And then you can see here something interesting happening. This is your reaction, actual reaction, which happens by collision of these water droplets in the micro emulsion. So the two micro emulsion means they do collide against each other and then there is exchange of these reactants. Exchange of the reactant, metal precursor and the reducing agent. The reaction happens inside that tiny core of 5 to 10 nanometer in size and then this reactant exchange is so fast that they form a nice precipitate inside the aqueous core. So after the reaction is over. So this is what is our metal oxide particle. So the nanoparticle of quantum dot which we wanted has formed inside this core. So here whatever the process is uh, for formation of nanoparticle is happening in three stages nucleation, growth and coagulation of these primary particles. So they result in the formation of this final nanoparticle which is surrounded by uh, the surfactant. So there is a surfactant and then this continuous phase. So this is the synthetic scheme and we have seen the different reagents which have been used are cadmium oxide, trioctyl phosphine, tetradecyl phosphonic acid. So these are your surfactants and selenium powder. So the capping agent used is trioctyl phosphine oxide, topo. So this and there are there was some use of alcohol is also there which is acting as a co-surfactant, the fourth component. So after this, these cadmium selenide particles which are formed, they may be further covered with a, if you want a, a size selecting effect, you can cover it further with a zinc sulfide. So you can add another precursor of zinc sulfide which will form one more layer like a shell. So these cadmium selenide quantum dots may be protected further by formation of these zinc sulfide shell. So that becomes a core shell particle. We will see the applications of these core shell nanoparticles in our next module. So you can just recollect how the uh, micro emulsions provide a template so that you get the particles of a particular dimension say 5 nanometer or they act as a nano reactor wherein the two reactants they uh, uh, react together and form the precipitate. So that, that is the beauty of this micro emulsion uh, method. So herein you have these um, reacting core of a particular dimension and so after the reaction that is nucleus, nucleation growth and uh, coagulation, we will get the nanoparticles of that exact dimension. That is why microemulsions are called as nano reactors or templates. So, let us look at the advantages and disadvantages. There are several parameters which affect the properties of these 
micro emulsion uh, the nanoparticles which are formed by this method so some of the parameters are the particle size the particle size distribution and the phases of the final particles formed the concentration of the reactive precursors the selenium oxide amount of that the uh, surfactants which are used the metal precursors which are used all these concentrations they also affect the properties of the micelle and the percentage weight of the aqueous phase in the microemulsion because that decides the continuous phase then there are certain advantages the method is suitable for preparation of very small particles and it has a very good control on the particle size the few disadvantages are the production yield are very low and there is a need to use large amount of liquids so you can see this is a wet chemical method and hence a large amount of liquid solvents are used so here we complete uh, our discussion of microemulsion method we have done it in three parts in the first part we saw what is uh, what is mean by microemulsion the difference between emulsion and microemulsion the types of microemulsions then we also learned uh, how the microemulsions are formed the thermodynamic concentrations that is the decrease in delta g is essential for formation of a stable thermodynamically stable microemulsion and then in the third part we learned how in a laboratory the quantum dots can be synthesized so thank you very much for watching so next week we will learn the physical methods the physical techniques of chemical synthesis of nanomaterials thanks for watching